the first thing you want to do is, this is that flex wrap that we had, is you just want to make sure that you're going to be able to come up the sides at least, at least six inches when you apply this product. Now it's, it's pretty decent out today, so the stuff's going to stick pretty well. Now if, once it does stick, you're pretty much committed. There's a lot of different ways you can roll this stuff up and put this in, but go ahead and line it up on the inside of the wall. Shove it in tight, run your finger along the bottom so it's good and tight. If you don't do that, then when you put the window in, the jam and the frame might hit and kind of clog it up. Doesn't fit very well. Just kind of work your way back nice and easy all the way across the opening. Of course, I'm trying to stay out of the way, so I'll probably get it crooked now. <laughs> Go all the way to the corner again. Make sure it's flat, tight, tight in this corner. There's plenty there. Dow's gonna love me for that. And just peel the peel the other one off. This is, this is the neat stuff about this product. You just take your finger, shove it in all the way. Comes all the way back down, tight, put it tight, shove it around. Now if it's cold, that's not the best look there. If it's cold, you probably want to take a plastic cap and put it right here or staple it. So that, because it takes 24 hours for this to really stick. And after 24 hours, it's pretty tough to get this stuff off. They're shipped with this nailing flange nailed down in the box. And then they pop up like this, so they nail in the opening. So when you have this nail flange on the side, you have this void right here. And that's what we had in that slide, you know, that hole. But the bad thing is, is as many times you move these around, go back and forth like any plastic, especially if they're sitting outside, they dry up and then they snap off. And they're pretty easy to tear as well. Uh, some, some manufacturers send this in a separate box. You set it down a groove, tap it in with a block of wood and a hammer. But the, with the Eagles, they came uh, already installed. Now this one, we've had this in storage as well, but it has, a, it has the nailing flanges all the way around the outside. On the inside, you can tell this is an older unit because it has the older version of the NFRC label on it. But this one does have the U-Factor, has a solar heat gain coefficient, U-Factor is 0.37 which is uh, uh, kind of high on, on this particular unit. Solar heat gains 0 0.30, and then that's if it's residential, then they have a different rating if it's non-residential. But when you really want to see this label, if you buy a window that doesn't have that label on it, don't buy it. Because you can, I mean, we can go out and make these in our garage if we want, but you have to pay a lot of money to be able to get a manufacturer and have these tested. And uh, this one here is aluminum clad, argon filled, low E, so it tells you exactly what's in this window. The other, thing to, the other thing to look at when you're buying these as well is when the window gets taller, make sure that, you know, if it's much taller than this, you'd probably have two closures on it. Because sometimes there's, you can buy a window this tall and if it has one closure, then it gets tweaked in the opening sometimes and then they don't, they're not sealed on the exterior. Don't just buy the same window for the whole house. When the person comes out, okay, this direction is obviously east. This one's obviously west. I want the glazing that's for the west. I want the one that's for the east, north, and south. So you may have four, sometimes even six different glazing options for the same house. Now, it's sitting in the opening. Now, to, for, the, for the house wrap, it would be all the way across the window. And we used to just exit. We'd go like that with the house wrap and just fold it in. And then we'd stick the window in, and the window would be over the house wrap. We did that for years and years, and then we'd rely on the caulking behind this if we chose to caulk it, or some tape. And that was just probably five or six, seven years ago that we were still doing that. You know, and really think about it. Water gets behind the siding, and then where's it going to go? I mean, would you roof a house this way? Would you put your shingle on the out? No. So. When you cut the house wrap, make sure that you tuck in the sides, tuck in the bottom, and then the top, cut it off, 
and you can staple or tack it up like this just to hold it up there. Cut it at an angle, okay? You can, you can uh, go ahead and nail this in place and you'd have the nail flange right here normally. So you take the four inch wide tape. The key to this is they want you to at least go four to six inches past of course, I didn't cut that one right. There we go. Four to six inches past the flashing, and just run right this, run this right down the window. Can you tell me what could happen if I just run it nice and pretty like this? If I just butt it up against there, like it's showing a lot of magazines, this is just butted right up against that nail flange. What happens if this nail flange has got a little hole right here? So you really didn't accomplish much, but it looks like you followed the code or followed the standards. You want to kind of want to roll it around the side like I did down the bottom here. I went over, came out about a quarter of an inch, and covered the nail flange. So then it's sealed actually to the window unit. So then it holds that water out. The other thing is if you go over a little bit, then you can mold this in this corner a little bit better so that it seals that corner out. Now sometimes you're not going to be able to get it good enough, so run another little piece of, of tape across that. But this is where all the, this is where our big issues are. Right there and right here. You'll want to go over the sides about that far. Go all the way across the top. Seal that nail flange down tight and make sure this corner right here is sealed. And it doesn't hurt to put, you know, I know it sounds kind of goofy here again, but it doesn't hurt to put another piece of tape right there. Just cut a small scrap. You kind of force it around that corner, just like this. Now you've sealed it even better. Because J-channel, which is a vinyl trim piece that goes around, too many builders rely on J-channel to hold the water out. Once this is put in, put this back down, and then you can take red tape here if you want, or Tyvek tape, seal that to the flashing, and then tape over this. So now the water's coming down, it goes over the top of this, goes over the top of that, and it's gone. Any water that's behind this then can come out here. This is the hardest thing for old guys. We just can't get past caulking this thing. Okay, on the inside, when you set the window, you normally have it, you want a little bit of space here. So you want to leave at least a quarter of an inch so that you can get some spray foam. Like Silas was saying earlier, if you jam fiberglass in here, it's a complete waste of time. You might as well go out and buy some furnace filters and put them in there because it's not going to stop any air whatsoever. So you can use minimal expanding foam and do it like in two, three, four shots. If you blow it all in once, you may force the jam in. But just put a little bit of foam in there till it's fully uh, the cavity is full down on the bottom before you would put this in if you want just put a piece of uh, like cedar or redwood siding that angles this so this window would actually be up a little bit and then run the bead of adhesive or a, a bead of expanding foam about an inch in the inside of this and then have it for an inch in all the way to here don't go all the way back in what you what you're trying to do is catch any water that goes around this the slope of the sill underneath or the siding will cause the water to go out and come out on that nail flange on the back side. That's angled, so if you just cut another piece of the siding, since that's angled this way, just cut another piece, turn it 180 degrees, set it on top of this then, and now it's flat, and then you can shim. When you buy this window, or any window basically, when you look at the brochure, it's going to have the window sitting there, and it's got all these dimensions on the left, and these dimensions on the top. They'll sell like masonry opening, glazing opening. The one you're looking for is RO, rough opening. The rough opening is what you're supposed to have between this piece of wood, that one, this one, and this one. Okay, and it's always the width first. So like, let's just say this would be a, let's say a 2030, two foot by three foot, let's say that are 24 by 36. You wanna look at what the window opening or what the actual dimension of the window unit is and what the rough opening is, you may want to open the opening up a little bit to allow your room to get 
some foam in around it. So make sure you've got at least a quarter of an inch, a bare minimum. You can cut maybe this down a little bit, depending on the design of the house, this, this trimmer in here, but never try to modify the window. Oh God, don't ever try to do that. Because if you, you take a little bit of paint off of it, your warranty's gone. And remember, never shim the top of a window. Uh, especially a big picture window because over a period of years that opening will creep down. It has to. I mean, that's just the nature of wood. Um, and if you, if you go ahead and you shim up above the top, if you shim those tight, it'll just take it and it won't operate. You just have to make sure, too, that this is perfectly square diagonally. And that's tough on a remodel sometime. Now, every manufacturer is different. You want to ask them because there's manufacturers saying, don't use any foam around here. And why do you think they say don't put any foam around there? Because people go to the store, buy the maximum expanding foam. And the first time I used it, when I put it around the front entryway of this friend of mine, his front door, I came back next day and I could not get in because that foam took that jam. And I mean, I had to cut it all out to be able to go through the door. And that's, you know, that if foam's put in correctly, it's perfect. But there again, and then see, and if you have, uh, if you have your house being sprayed with foam, those guys will do the window details for you too. That's a nice thing. Now I've done I've done windows before too, as I've wrapped these with like say a certainty membrane before I put the window in. So I'll take a 12 inch strip of membrane and I'll put an acoustical caulking all the way around the window, a bead of it, and then I'll staple that plastic all the way around. So when you see this window like this, you'd see plastic coming out all the way around it. Then I would foam it, and I'd take that plastic over, and I'd acoustical caulk it to the frame. Now, how much, how much air leakage can I possibly get then? Zero. That's the neat thing about that U-factor. When they had U-value, I mean, it was kind of, it's kind of a joke to rate the glass. I mean, how much leakage am I going to get out right here? Um, but when you do the whole unit, they rate the unit. But is there a rating from the unit to here? No. Okay, these have a flexible flange. So the windows are really hard to keep in and out uh, the same distance. So you have to really pay attention to get this in the same distance, this in the same distance, so when you trim it. But if somebody blows too much foam on it, I was just thinking of that as soon as you said that. They blow too much foam, especially the top, it'll push that flange, and then the window's out here like this. And then when you probably put your trim on, you're inside making all this custom extension jam that if I was paying somebody, there's two to three years of heat bills again. Because that's why you want to keep it as simple as possible, because if I'm paying a person, say 20 bucks an hour, if I'm paying him $20 an hour, you know, he does that for eight, eight hours. That's probably my heat bill if it's a good house. That's one, that's one thing about any of these house wraps, um, is if you're using wood siding, and if you get a lot of wetting on that wood, there's sugars in the wood, the sugars will travel down the shaft of the nail, and it'll take, well, the picture that I saw on the house wrap, imagine about a circle this big where the Tyvek lost its water repellency, water repellency cut the Tyvek, looked behind, and the OSB was gone, completely rotted out, because the wood sugar's transferred to that nail. Now, the big thing was, is I thought you were supposed to nail that siding onto the stud. Well, they were just nailing it into the sheeting. So that was a lot of the issue. So that's, you know, there's a, you know, that's another thing I always constantly think about, well, does this work with that? Does that work with this?